In this video, I'll discuss the difference between inducible and repressible operons. Let's remind ourselves what an operon is. This is your typical operon structure, which you'll find in prokaryotes like E. coli. You have a regulatory gene here, distant from a series of structural genes, that share a promoter, operator, and termination sequence. The regulatory gene will encode a repressor, which, when active, will bind to the operator to limit transcription of the structural genes. When the repressor is inactive, it cannot bind to the operator, which means that RNA polymerase can freely bind to the promoter and transcribe the structural genes. There are two types of operons, inducible operons and repressible operons. Inducible operons often contain genes that encode proteins involved in a catabolic pathway, a series of steps that breaks down a molecule in the environment. In an inducible operon, the regulatory gene generally encodes an active repressor that is created in a form that allows it to bind to the operator and prevent transcription of the structural genes of the operon. That all changes when an environmental factor comes into play. Generally, this environmental factor is the molecule or a derivative of the molecule that is broken down by the protein products of these structural genes. This environmental factor will bind to the repressor, altering its shape and making it inactive. This means that the repressor can no longer block transcription and the proteins from these genes can be created. Generally, these proteins will go on to help the cell break down and use the environmental factor. In this way, an inducible operon is naturally not expressed, but can be expressed in the presence of the environmental factor that needs to be broken down by the proteins associated with the genes in the operon. An example of an inducible operon is the LAC operon in E. coli. The genes in this operon encode proteins that help break down lactose for use in the cell. If lactose is not present, the operon repressor is active, preventing the cell from making proteins it doesn't need. When lactose is present, the repressor is inactive, and the genes that encode proteins necessary for the breakdown of lactose are transcribed and translated, allowing the cell to use the lactose. In this way, the cell is efficient only making the proteins necessary to break down lactose when lactose is present. A repressible operon is effectively the opposite. Often the genes in a repressible operon encode proteins involved in an anabolic pathway, a pathway that makes something that the cell usually needs. In a repressible operon, the regulatory gene encodes an inactive repressor. So this operon is naturally expressed, allowing the genes to encode proteins that help make something important for the cell. When the molecule accumulates within the cell at high concentrations, it will bind to the repressor, changing it into the active form. This allows the repressor to bind to the operator, shutting down transcription of the structural genes that encode the proteins that make the molecule. This prevents the cell from making something that it already has too much of. An example of a repressible operon is the TRIP operon in E. coli. The operon contains genes that encode proteins that help make tryptophan, an amino acid that the cell constantly needs. Naturally, this operon's repressor is inactive, and the operon structural genes are expressed, resulting in the production of tryptophan. When there's an excess of tryptophan in the cell, either due to overproduction within the cell or availability in the environment, the tryptophan binds to the repressor, making it active. This means that repressor can block transcription of these genes and prevent the cell from making more tryptophan that it doesn't currently need. Once again, this cell is saving energy and resources by being able to limit gene expression to only the times when the cell is in need of the product of the genes. Let's look at these two scenarios side by side. Inducible operons are usually involved in a catabolic pathway, a pathway that breaks down a factor when it's available in the environment. The operon structural genes are not expressed unless that environmental factor is present. In this way, the presence of the environmental factor induces the activity of the operon.
A repressible operon is usually involved in an anabolic pathway, one in which the cell is making something it needs. Its structural genes are expressed until that environmental factor is in abundance in the cell. When the environmental factor is in abundance, it represses the activity of the operon, limiting structural gene expression. The difference in these types of operons is in the product of the regulatory gene. In an inducible operon, the regulatory gene creates an active repressor that must be inactivated due to the presence of an environmental factor. In a repressible operon, the regulatory gene creates an inactive repressor that is activated by the presence of the environmental factor. In both cases, the environmental factor acts as a change agent, leading to a structural change in the repressor to alter the level of expression of the structural genes. Both of these scenarios allows the cell to save energy and resources by expressing the structural genes of the operon only when their protein products are needed. That's all you need to know about inducible and repressible operons. If you'd like to learn more about the TRIP or LAC operons, check out my other videos.